Buonasera, everybody. Welcome again to La Cucina Quarantina, and I'm noticing my hair is a big mess, but hey, you know what? It's day, what, 40 or so of being locked in our homes, so who matter. cares? Who cares, you know? One of my friends today was noting that all of us with short hair are all going to end up with the same haircut by the end of this, so... That's fine. Anyway, here's Luca today with me. Hello. And Luca and I are working on making a little quick dinner. And I've had a long day on Zoom. I've been talking to <laughs> friends and colleagues and work things all day. And so I'm tired and I don't really um, have time to make anything elaborate. So we're going to make carbonara today, which is probably the fastest of all pastas to put together. Uh, and I'll go ahead and show you how to make a pasta in really 15 minutes, more or less. And and as a bonus, we are going to recycle our pork shoulder yet again. So uh, the first iteration was the fake porchetta. The second was pozole. The third one we're going to make is I'm going to use the cubed uh, pork shoulder as our pancetta. So uh, kind of an interpretation. All of my cooking is a little bit of an interpretation and not a genuine variety of anything because I like to be creative because that's what makes cooking fun. But also, um, I use what I have, and let's eat that pork because it's really good. So, also as another added bonus to making carbonara, you get to eat pasta with bacon in it, which is one of the great delights in life. All right, so Luca here has uh, three or four slices of bacon. We are going to do bacon as well because we're going to make it extra meaty carbonara. That's so, the best thing ever. yeah. So we're going to start with um, with that. Then after, I'm going to go ahead and get the, the pan rolling here. We're going to start by throwing in our bacon, just any bacon. You don't have to have guanciale. Most of you don't have that, but if you had that at home, go ahead and use it. But pancetta or guanciale are typically what you would use in this. I don't know any of you who pancetta or guanciale. Guanciale is pork cheek, um, and you can buy that stuff, but bacon, frankly, works just as well. Exactly. Try to get thick. All right, here we go. So we are cutting up the bacon. And Luca, can you please smash and dice the garlic for us, as I have shown you? Indeed I can. Good, just toss it all in. Smash the garlic up. So what's um, key about carbonara is that carbonara is just about being fast. And it's about getting all of your ingredients prepped uh, and then tossing it all in real quick. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had it, but it's an egg and bacon sauce, basically. Watch those fingers. Um, so it's like breakfast food, really. Breakfast food over pasta. Um, so carbonara is typically made out of four or five cloves of garlic, finely minced, uh, four or five slices of bacon, sliced or minced, uh, and then two eggs mixed with a cup of Parmesan cheese. So that's typically how we do it. I have a few little kind of twists on it that I do that are slightly different that I'm going to show you today. Uh, but you make the sauce uh, separately, and after the pasta is all cooked, then you toss it in to the sauce, and that uh, hot pasta, just the heat of the pasta, should cook the carbonara. Remember that one funny music video about the guy, the, the song uh, about the guy who got a hot girlfriend but then she couldn't make carbonara? <laughs> yeah, I do. I'm looking at this. This is 9 to 11 minutes. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and change this for uh, some spaghetti. You can do spaghetti or fettuccine. I've also got, let's see, yeah, I've just got cheap. Uh, here we go. This is 8 to 10 minutes. This is from... Uh, Safeway cheap pasta, so we're going to use this. Always look on your box. I don't know if anybody's ever noticed that, but on every pasta box, no matter whether it's from Safeway or if it's from Barilla or something, uh, it will always say your cooking time on the side. And since I have an audience, I want to make sure that I've got a pasta that is going to cook in the amount of time that I am here with you guys. So it'll take about eight minutes for me to finish telling you how to make this recipe. So let's go ahead and toss this spaghetti in. I'm doing a full pound. Quite a bit of garlic. Yeah. So in goes the pasta. Yeah. 
It was at a low boil, not a huge boil, but a low kind of simmer. Hey, you guys all seem to really like that lemon. Oh! <laughs> that means we're cooking something good if the fire alarm's going off. Woo! All right, and this time I'm not gonna let the pasta get stuck together, so I'm actually dipping my, my spoon into my bacon fat reservoir, and I'm stirring it in here to break up the pasta, just to make sure the spaghetti does not stick. All right, and I'm gonna turn this down because obviously it's getting a little smoky. Okay, here we go. So I have a funny thing on my stove I just wanna show you guys. This is an Electrolux. If I go down low, it has a light on. The middle part is a burner. So that's the keep warm burner. This is the coolest stove ever. It's a hybrid um, gas and electric convection oven. And it is one of the best things I ever bought for my kitchen. All right. So Luca, I'm gonna let you take over from here. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got this going on, and then I'm gonna go ahead and toss in the garlic. I know it looks like a lot of garlic, but that's fine. It should have a lot of garlic. Thank you for your dicing, Luca, nice job. Mm -hmm. So I'm turning the heat way down, and I'm going to let this kind of, you want it to crisp up? No, I'm gonna need that. Oh. Oop. Uh, you don't wanna scald the garlic, so we're just turning it down a little bit. By the way, did I show you guys this my t-shirt my sister made me? It says Ooh. Adventures of Sarah, and it's got uh -huh. my logo on the back. If only I actually had a place, a swag store where you guys could actually buy them, but my sister can't need this one. So someday. Someday. Okay. So next thing. Now we're gonna grab this pork shoulder that is now a couple days old. <laughs> What the heck? Why don't you guys just take out the, take the battery out. Don't you guys love the liveliness of my house? It's so much fun. You never know when the alarm, fire alarm's gonna go off. But that's what it is, it's reality. This is no Jada De Laurentiis or whatever. What's that other guy? Uh, guy Fieri. Oh, oh not, not him. All right, here. Truly a homegrown cooking show. I appreciate, by the way, all of you, when I was having a kind of a rough day yesterday, sending me those really nice messages and it being encouraging. This is such a strange pivot. I would not have ever guessed that anybody would be interested in watching me cook my dinner every night. Um, but I'm really happy to hear that you guys are getting, finding joy in my cooking lessons. Okay. Oh, look at that. that into the pan and get that cooking a little bit. So typically you don't have that much meat in carbonara and I think that that is a shame because that is what I always like. Even when I'm in Rome and I'm at really good restaurants that specialize in carbonara, it drives me to distraction how little bacon there is in any one carbonara. So we're doubling down on our meatiness here. And that is absolutely okay. Because there is nothing wrong with meatiness. All right, here we go. I was thinking that you guys would be super bored watching me cook every night, but then again, I, uh, I like watching The Great British Bake Off every night, and I find <laughs> it very, very soothing. So I do understand the feeling of it being soothing to watch somebody cook. So I appreciate that you find me soothing. Although this one has been a little bit uh, more panicked with the fire alarms and whatnot. We just, we're trying to just be exciting, that's all. We're just <laughs> being more exciting as a, a cooking team here, a mother-son cooking team. Mm. All right, here 
right. So I'm going to put this onto a very low flame and just get these flavors all incorporated. I wanted to be sure, and I think I'll add a little bit more. I'm gonna grab some of this with the crust. Remember this yummy crust that I told you guys about? That's where the goodness is, the rosemary, that garlic, that uh, the sage and thyme. The crust is so, so delicious. So if we can get a little bit of that flavor infused into this carbonara, I think it's gonna be something pretty delightful. Okay. So that going. All right, into the pot. So I'm just now kind of infusing. Look at that pile of goodness. Yeah. And I'm going to kind of keep this, this pan warm. I'm going to get this uh, meat kind of heated through and scrape off all these little brown bits because that's the yumminess. Remember that's called the fawn. And the thong is always where the tastiness is. We like, we like those little burnt on bits because once they get scraped up and added into whatever your sauce is, that's the train to Flavortown, man. It's the, the first class ticket to Flavortown. All right. Okay, so we've got step one done, which is our meatiness and our garlickiness. Our pasta is cooking really nice and quickly. So the next part of this equation is cheese. Parmesan. Parmesan cheese. So again, this Parmesan block is probably close to five years old, but that's okay. We keep on working with it. And next time you come home from Italy, be sure to put one of these into your bag or several. I don't know if any of you guys remember, but in the fall, I came home and I had a wheeled suitcase full of treats and I brought home two giant wedges of Italian cheese. It's the aged kinds like these that easily can make it through an airplane ride. Always put your cheese that you're purchasing, always, into your carry-on. Uh, once, let's see, it was in my old house more than 10 years ago, I filled up my backpack uh, with cheese. I put probably, oh, I don't know, probably 10 different kinds of cheese into my backpack. And they were all vacuum sealed, um, but even so, I put them all in the backpack. It was July. I checked the backpack. Oh no. Yeah. You don't remember this, Luca, because you're I don't, a but... baby. Uh, so my bag got lost. And my bag was sitting on the tarmac of the Rome airport for like three days in 95 degree weather. So eventually, <laughs> when that bag made it back to Seattle, it landed on my doorstep. And uh, it was the most foul smelling bag. I actually ended up tossing the backpack because it was infused with the smell of rotten cheese. So this is my tale of woe that I share with you only so that when you go to Italy next, you remember, do not put the cheese into your check luggage. Always put it into your carry-on. The only time I've ever gotten in trouble with cheese is actually, I was going home through the Paris airport and I tried to take a camembert home. And I had no idea, but apparently camembert, there's some kind of bad juju about camembert because it's a fresh cheese. They will not let you take it through. And actually I got my bag scanned at the Paris airport. They pulled me aside, the customs police pulled me aside, looked through my entire backpack like I was a drug dealer. And I was pretty much sure like, okay, well, I guess they must think I'm a drug dealer and I couldn't figure out why. But it turns out they were, they were super mad about the camembert. They threatened me. They were like, if you ever do this again, you're going to be kicked out of Europe and all this stuff. And I was just like, over camembert? So, yeah, don't ever, ever try to smuggle camembert into the U.S. Because who knows why, but people are not pleased with that. And if you do, uh, oh. try, get caught over a much cooler cheese, like the, the, Sardin uh, the Sardinian maggot cheese or something like that. Not over a... What are you even talking about? Okay, two eggs. I got two eggs now. Eggs are going into this. The Parmesan should be roughly a cup of shredded Parmesan. And when I talk about Parmesan, remember, I'm not talking about the green stuff in, that comes out of the shaker pan. And, you know, not to be snobby, but just to tell you about my blue collar credentials, my uh, past, that is the only way that I thought Parmesan, I thought Parmesan was spelled with an S. Yeah, P-A-R-M-E-S-A-N. That's what I thought it was. So believe me, I had no idea either. That I didn't. I didn't know that actually. Well, yeah, you don't know, but in the past, when I was a kid, 
Parmesan came out of a can, a shaker can. And I think they still sell it. I'm not sure. But they I do. Think, yeah, okay. So, yeah, people generally in the past used to shake their Parmesan, not uh, shred it. Okay, so two eggs into the cheese, and I'm going to mix it up. Now, here's where I'm going to deviate a little bit from mainstream recipes because I don't like the sort of uh, texture of just egg only car uh, carbonara, and I add some heavy whipping cream or some half and half to the recipe that it turns out a little bit better. So I'm going to go with maybe like a quarter cup-ish, something like that, not too much. If you do this, you'll have a creamier sauce. Most recipes call only for the egg and the Parmesan. Okay, so that's your, your pasta sauce right there. That's all there is to it. We've got this going. I'm gonna put a whole bunch of, of fresh ground pepper into our sauciness. And this is gonna to come together lightning faster in just a sec. Lots of pepper, I like lots of pepper. I know you guys want me to show you also cacio pepe, but I just have to wait until the, the grocery stores around here open up so that I can go to a deli and pick up cacio. There is a, cacio is a type of cheese. So there is a um, place in Seattle I can get it. They're just currently not operating because of the lockdown. Oh, look how greasy my hands are. That's how you know it's good. That's how you know it's good. Uh, I also should mention that I think me and the kids have each gained at least 10 pounds since we've been up quarantine. No? Uh, I'd say I'd say a good probably. Yeah, it's pretty depressing actually. Alright. I've heard many, many myths about how you can tell if pasta is done. One of my favorites is that you get a piece and then you throw it against the wall. And if it sticks, it's done. What? Yeah. You haven't heard that? I've never heard that once. Yeah, this is a, a common this, ah, okay. The other way to know it's done is you just know it's done. It's definitely done. All right. So, let's drain it. And here's where the magic begins. So, Luca, just you know, hold the part down there. Okay. I'm going to pop it over making, here with... I'm making a little pan of caramelized onions over here, which is why the camera might have been a little, little bit shaky, because I'm making caramelized onions so I can have a sandwich after this. Excuse me. You can turn off that burner, please, baby. Mm-hmm. So I am um, reserving just a little bit of pasta water and spaghetti so that I can thin the sauce if it's not the way I want it, okay? So I drain the spaghetti. Now the spaghetti goes into the pan. It's already nice and hot. Okay, let's mix the toppings in. And this is where it's gonna get really weird There's really quick. What? There's the meat. Yeah, I'm gonna get the meat kind of distributed before I start pouring in the sauciness. Okay, so that's a pretty good pasta versus meat distribution. All right, and here's the part. Where's my splatula? There we go. I'm gonna scrape this all into the pan. You wanna use a spatula if you've got one to make sure you don't leave any of that yummy Parmesan or egg in the bowl. Waste not, want not, you know. This is what makes this dish delicious. All right, and then you just get in there and you start mixing and mixing. And what this is doing is, I know that you don't like the idea of eating raw eggs. I can hear you, you're thinking it. But when you keep mixing it and you've got a hot pan and you've got hot pasta, it is cooking. So we're gonna mix it in, mix, 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 and keep turning and mixing and turning and mixing. And then you, you will, yeah, you can start to see that it's gonna start getting a little chunky looking. And once it's gotten a little bit chunky looking, you know that it is cotto or cooked. We wanna make sure that it is cooked when it's done. All right. I think that looks pretty good. If you can kind of see, like on the meat, you can see the kind of glaze of cooked um, egg and cheese. 
Never has such a delicious sentence ever been uttered. <laughs> All right. I think that's good. I don't think I need to add any pasta water. Uh, the cream, I think, made it a nice consistency. You can go a little bit heavier on the cream if you wish. But let's get in there for the tastiness, the fun part. Mm-hmm. That's really good. Um, let's see, what does it need? Maybe it needs a little bit of salt. Yeah, it probably needs just a little bit of salt. Let's try to piece of meat in. Hum. Mm. Excellent. Yep. I probably put a little I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put a little dash of salt. Shake the salt all over it. This is such a simple and clean dish, you want to make sure that it's seasoned properly. So a little bit of salt. And then a little bit of pepper. And I think we're in business. All right, Luca. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to be my final taste tester? Indeed I am. Make sure I adjusted the seasonings properly. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh no, it's gonna be hot. Here you go, take it. <laughs> so, so good. Oh my goodness, forgive me. Woo! That Yay! Is, is so Mama good. wins again. So, there we go. This is probably the easiest uh, thing. I would, I would say carbonara is akin to like the Italian version of Top Ramen. It is easy, it is cheap, it's quick, and you can kind of jazz it up with whatever you've got. If you want to dump some peas in there, you can. I mean, don't tell any Italians I told you to do that, but you could. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm. It's really good. And it's a great way to use up leftover pork roast. If you've got that, you can make it a little extra, extra meaty. You could also add in, if you wanted to, some diced rosemary. I mean, dress it up, have some fun with it. Uh, you don't have to stick to the strict uh, interpretation. Okay, I'm going to just stand here eating this, so I better go sit down before I get rude and uh, chew on camera too much. Luca's going to plate it. Actually, Luca, can you sh let's show him how to plate it better. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Okay. okay. So, so, so here's how you plate it. Plate how to plate spaghetti. All right. So, so you take your, your tongs here, and what you do is you get a little bit of pasta right here, and mm -hmm. then you twist... Twist. You may have too much, but that's Twist. okay. That's fine. This is the amount of pasta that I want. Yep, yeah, there you go. And, and then, then you put it down here and you have a nice cool little swirl. Isn't that nice? Look how well I taught you guys. And then you go through and you pick up the little Meat. goodies Meat. and scoop some goodies onto the top. So that's how you plate a spaghetti. <laughs> the saint of carbonara. Saint Carbonara has blessed you. So there you go, you guys. Uh, that's all the news that's fit to print from Cucina Quarantena today. I hope you're all doing well. Mm -hmm. I hope you are uh, surviving your homeboundness. Italians are going to get out of jail pretty soon here. They've got another week before they can go out and get a cappuccino, which is exciting. And one other piece of news I wanted to share is my friend in New Zealand told me that they actually have eased almost all their restrictions. So business should be back to usual there really, really soon. So it's exciting stuff. Uh, we'll, we're all going to enjoy going to the, the grocery store so much more than we ever used to in the past. So <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's Thursday. I don't know what I have in mind for tomorrow. I haven't thought about it. I'll think of something. Friday, please join us here. My friend Andrew Vallone is going to join us for a Zoom Lunch and Learn. And this week's topic is going to be uh, becoming an expatriate. If you'd ever dreamed about living in a foreign country and who hasn't, my friend Andrew is going to tell you what it's actually like to uh, leave your home country, move to a foreign country, go through all the red tape, uh, and become a resident somewhere else. So that's what we're going to talk about at 11 o'clock on Friday. All right. Ciao for now. A domani. Ciao, ciao.